February 15th, St. Viridiana, Virgin, Third Order. Viridiana was born in the year 1182 at Castel Fiorentino, near Florence, of the noble family of the Atavanti. Her vocation to a higher life was discernible even in her youth. She loved seclusion, prayer, and works of penance. As she advanced in years, she grew in grace, and her innocence and virtue won for her the love and veneration of everyone with whom she came in contact. As a young girl, Verdiana was sent to the home of a relative to assist his wife in the administration of the household. Here she displayed good sense that was quite extraordinary for one of her age. She also utilized every opportunity to practice works of charity. Once in a famine, she distributed to the poor a great quantity of beans from the storerooms, not knowing that they had already been sold by her uncle. When the buyer arrived to get them and the bins were found empty, her uncle reproached her bitterly. Verdiana, deeply grieved, prayed all night long, and lo, in the morning, the bins of the storeroom were again filled to the brim. The news of this miracle spread far and wide, and in order to avoid the marks of respect that were being shown her on all sides, she undertook a pilgrimage to Compostela in Spain, to the grave of St. James the Apostle, and later also to the tombs of the Apostles in Rome. Upon her return home, Verdiana had an anchorage built hard by the chapel of St. Anthony in Florence. The cell is preserved to this day. It is ten feet long and three and a half feet wide. For furniture, there is only a ledge, a foot wide, projecting from the stone wall and serving as a seat. A small window in the cell opens upon the chapel. Through it, she could attend Holy Mass and receive Holy Communion, as well as the necessary bodily nourishment. Verdiana was only 26 years old when, with a crucifix in her arms and escorted by her spiritual director and a great number of people, she entered the narrow cell and permitted the door to be immediately walled up. In this voluntary retirement, she spent the remaining 34 years of her life as an anchoress in prayer and severe penance. In summer, her bed was the bare earth. In winter, she lay on a board with a block of wood serving as a pillow. Her food consisted of bread and water and herbs. Her only living associates were two large snakes which crept in and out of her cell with whom she shared her food and her dwelling in the spirit of penance for many years. About the year 1222, when St. Francis was preaching penance in the vicinity of Florence, he also went to visit the poor anchoress, gave her the habit of the Third Order, and many beautiful lessons on the proper way to live a contemplative life. After a very saintly life in which she had been granted the gift of miracles, Verdiana was also privileged with the revelation concerning the hour of her death. She prepared herself with the devout reception of the holy sacraments. While praying the penitential psalms, she died on February 1st, 1242, being 60 years old. Moved by the many extraordinary miracles that had occurred, Pope Clement VII approved the devotion to her in the year 1533, and later on, Pope Innocent XII added his approbation in 1694. On the Contemplative Life Consider that Saint Verdiana, after several years spent in a devout active life, was led by divine inspiration to devote herself entirely to a life of contemplation. Perfect contemplation cannot be enjoyed by man until he has entered heaven, where the sole happiness of the blessed consists in beholding God. But the perfect contemplation in heaven gives its name to that form of life here below 
in which men renounce all aspiration to material things and, as it were, forget them entirely in order to spend their lives only in contemplation of the things of heaven. Only souls that have been specially called by God can pursue this kind of severe penance, can pursue this kind of life. A previous holy life, as in the case of our anchoress, or severe penance and complete contempt for material comforts are usually signs of such a vocation. What high esteem we owe a life so heavenly spent here on earth. Consider the great benefits that accrue to the world from the life of contemplation, which is led in so many convents and at times even by private individuals. It is for souls of that kind that Almighty God was ready to spare Sodom if even no more than ten of them could be found. Souls of that kind pray for the faithful living in the midst of the turmoil of the world, that the world, the flesh, and the devil may not destroy them, as Moses of old prayed with outstretched arms when Israel was set upon by the Amalekites. And when Moses lifted up his hands, Israel overcame, but if he let them down a little, Amalek overcame. Exodus 17.11 What a lack of understanding, then, to say that such a life is useless, or that talent which could have been used to advantage in society is wasted there. Shall we perhaps also call it wasteful to burn the very best oil in the sanctuary lamp? Consider that we are all destined to lead the life of contemplation, inasmuch as it is the only kind of life that is led in heaven. Our first parents lived in most intimate association with God, but sin separated them from him. They themselves realized that they were no longer worthy to behold him, and they hid themselves from his sight. Our hearts are, so to say, encrusted with personal sins and evil habits, so that even if we keep ourselves free from mortal sin, we are not capable of permanent intimate association with God. This crust must be removed, and the soul must be cleansed from its scars, either here on earth with perfect penance, or in the next life in the flames of purgatory. Let us aim with the help of grace and by means of sincere penance to become worthy of the vision of God soon after death. Prayer of the Church. O God, who didst unite in thy servant, Viridiana, extraordinary fruits of penance with the flower of virginity, grant us, we beseech thee, that we may, through her merits and intercession, cleanse our souls with tears of repentance, and thus purified, deserve to be admitted into thy presence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Viridiana. Pray for us.